Well, the Bank of Canada says there are uh, there is an increased chance, rather, that rates are high enough at this level. In their summary of deliberations released today for the latest meeting by the central bank, they point to broader agreement that policymakers see themselves at the end of their rate hiking cycle, suggesting that the debate could move to how long rates need to remain at these restrictive levels and how soon, perhaps, the bank could start cutting. For more reaction, let's bring in Eric LaSalle. He's chief economist at RBC Global Asset Management. Eric, thanks so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. So it's really interesting that this meeting happened two weeks ago. Then we had the Fed meeting, their decision, yeah. all the commentary around that, more commentary after that. It has been actually a really busy couple of weeks. So to look back at the Bank of Canada's latest meeting, I mean, I don't even know if we should really dig, how, how deep to dig into it with all of the events that have happened since yeah, then. Yeah, I, I think there's still value. I mean, December yeah. is supposed to be a slow month in markets. It hasn't quite been that, has right. it? Uh, this is two weeks old. It is a little stale, but I, I think the fundamental economic analysis arguably still holds. And so, uh, you know, you, you caught the main point. So the main takeaway is, as you say, the quote is, the likelihood that monetary policy was sufficiently restrictive had increased. And so the context there is in the statement that came out at the same time this deliberation was taking place, it was just uh, they remain prepared to raise the policy rate further if needed. So it certainly is a softer take on that notion. And mm -hmm. so that's that's the big takeaway. I would say it was fairly mixed beyond that. So there were some hawkish bits. There was a lot of trepidation expressed about shelter inflation in particular. And you know, rent costs and mortgage interest costs are moving awfully fast. And it's more than half of inflation. And, and the deliberations behind the scenes reveal not everybody's convinced that's going to come down nicely. That is an issue. Uh, you know, wages are still an issue. They're worried a little bit about corporate pricing power. So certainly some hawkish concerns as well, but uh, but ultimately some dovish ones. And that statement, I guess, is is is, is the, the, the kicker. On the dovish side, just to, to cover those off mm -hmm. briefly, I would say they feel pretty good about what the economy has been doing, which is maybe a strange thing to say when the description is one in which the economy is sort of wobbling. But that is the idea right now. We need a slower economy to get those inflation targets. They're feeling pretty good about what inflation is up to as well. So, you know, characterizing that as a mix, some hawkish, some dovish. Yeah. But how would you you compare it to what we've been hearing from the U.S. Federal Reserve in terms of that sort of characterization? Well, you know, if the question was asked to me six weeks ago, I would have said pretty similar. Everybody's yeah. sort of talking tough, talking hawkish, and yet, you know, acknowledging that maybe the, the risks are shifting a little bit. The market hasn't been particularly fooled, and so the market, both in Canada and the U.S., of course, is pricing rate cuts for the first half of next year. Uh, but that Fed decision that came out since these, these minutes were formed, of course, was quite dovish, and Fed Chair Powell was talking pretty explicitly about the potential for rate cuts and that sort of thing. And so, of course, bonds have rallied aggressively since then, including in Canada. And maybe maybe the most Canadian relevant note would be uh, we also had a speech from Governor Macklem since then. And mm -hmm. he seemed to he certainly touching the same highlights, of course, as, as this. But he did seem to come across a little bit more dovishly again. And so, uh, you know, we will be considering whether and when we can lower our policy interest rate, which was not a you know, the word lower policy rate. That phrase did not show up in the statement or in these minutes. And so it would seem that Canada is, is tap dancing a little bit and making a bit of a pivot as well. And of course, the two are so intertwined in the yeah. sense that the Canadian dollar is up several cents since the Fed went dovish. And so uh, to some extent, you see a similar pattern. Why do you think the Bank of Canada is doing that tap dance more so than the Fed is? Like they are they are in the spotlight on that stage, uh, you know, it seems in comparison to maybe the Bank of Canada in the wings. Right. I, I, I would, to, to my eye, I think both sides have erred slightly in the opposite direction. And so uh, the Fed probably has revealed its cards a little bit too much. It's not that, that there's no rate cuts next year. There probably are. Or the timing probably is not too, too far in the future. But I think when you start talking about that, it's a bit of a dangerous thing just because bonds rally, financial conditions ease, and you've kind of lost the effect of your tightening several months before you wanted to. And so I wonder if that was an overstep by Fed Chair Powell. And I've since seen some other Fed speakers and some murmurs internally that the people are pushing back a little bit against that. Conversely, here we have the Bank of Canada still saying, you know, if anything, we'll raise rates again, which everyone's a bit skeptical of and kind of recognizing maybe that was pushing a little too hard in that direction. So I think we're sort of converging a little bit more towards the middle here, one in which this probably is a peak more likely than not. There are cuts than hikes out there. Uh, it's not quite clear that's happening in the spring. It could, but it's not quite clear it's that soon. What do you make of, of the inflation situation in this country? Because we did just get the latest uh, 
consumer price index data. And it did come in hotter than expected, staying steady at 3.1% for that headline rate, but the core uh, also holding. Um, and I, I just wonder, you know, the Bank of Canada is looking for multiple instances of uh, of inflation heading in the direction that it wants to see it going down, obviously. Um, but so this month is not that, or last month was not that. Right. Um, so what exactly would need to happen between now and, and cutting, um, you know, when it, when feel, you're looking at it? Yeah, yeah. To, to feel better about that. No, that, yeah. that's quite fair. And so you're, you're right, that was the extra twist since these minutes were created, which is inflation right. came in hot. So there, there's the counterpoint to all the, the dovish talk that's followed suit. Uh, it looks like at least part of that hot inflation print was explicitly temporary. Stats Canada saying, listen, this came out of sort of tourism and, 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 and tours, and they could see there were some artificial things that are probably going to reverse before too long. So I don't think we're going to get stuck quite here, but it is fair to say there are some unanswered questions in the inflation space, and we're not reliably seeing numbers that are 2%-ish right now. And circling back to the, the Bank of Canada's concerns, you know, the concern is very clearly that uh, that the shelter inflation is an issue here. It's a big chunk of the CPI. Uh, given the pressures that exist, it represents more than half of the annual inflation that Canada's experiencing right now. Uh, we can talk about home prices that are softer, and so that's a helpful thing, but the rent side just hasn't cooled, as you might have guessed. It's running 8% year over year, and of course, the interest costs are very much in the hands of the Bank of Canada. Canada in this strange sort of circular situation. But of course, that's not likely to get too, too much better going forward since people are rolling into higher mortgage rates, not lower. So, you know, there is a distinct risk that the shelter side remains sticky. And so I think for the Bank of Canada to feel comfortable lowering rates, I think they'd like to see a headline print that's sub three and a few things like that. But mm. I think specifically, they need to see some movement on the service inflation side and specifically on the shelter side, maybe some rent inflation that's cooling off a little bit. Uh, and, and then they can they can act with more confidence.